Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. All right, so it's middle of January and your B8 starts leaking coolant everywhere on the ground. What do you do? Well, first you gotta identify the leak. 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 It's definitely leaking. What are we gonna do? We're gonna fix it. So in this upload, I'm gonna show you how to fix a very common coolant leak on your B8A420T. So let's get started. All right guys, so we all know that antifreeze is extremely corrosive and plastic does not do well to antifreeze over a long period of time. Uh, more specifically, 150,000 miles, 150,000 miles. The chassis has 150,000 miles on it, give or take probably a few thousand without looking at the odometer. But that 150,000 miles of wear and tear and hot heat cycling on plastic components, no bueno. It's gonna fail. Um, and it can fail whenever it wants at that point. Not to mention, the causticness of antifreeze actually will deteriorate and eat that plastic up over time. In this upload, I'm gonna show you not only how to fix your leaking water pump, but I'm also gonna show you how to permanently fix the entire system from leaking because of deteriorating plastic and heat cycling. So let's, let me show you how we're gonna do that right now. So, OEM water pump. This is not OEM, this is from Advanced Auto Parts. Here is the OEM style water pump. It's made of plastic. It's got plastic housing, plastic impeller. And this is where your belt goes around and all as well. Putting this one in, save you a few bucks. But for like the $20 difference of buying an OEM water pump that's made of plastic, you can buy this. This is the water pump distribution module, as they call it. I know, fancy terms, right? You're thinking, Jack, that's probably got to cost like $200 by itself, maybe 500, right? I bought four parts. I bought the coolant pipe that goes on the back of the engine. I bought a plastic water pump and a all metal water pump, plus a distribution tube, and two gallons of antifreeze, $235. Here's what I'm gonna suggest. Do not buy this, this is crap. Buy the metal one, you can get them. They're out there on the market. Put your OEM sensors in, get rid of the fact this aftermarket sensor if you don't have anything failing. And then all this is metal. Your thermostat housing is made of metal. Your module is made of metal. Gaskets aren't made of metal, but they're regular gaskets, you know? This is not gonna fail and warp and deteriorate over time. This is just gonna be like this when the car's rusted away, sitting in the middle of a field someplace, dead. The engine's still gonna work and this is gonna be fine. Well, let's get this installed and let's get your Audi back on the road. And I'm gonna show you how to install this right now. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is identify where your water pump is located. Most transverse mounted engines like GM V8, LS, Camaros, things like that, water pumps in the front of the engine. Heck, even most older Audis, you know, the water pump is in the front of the engine. Uh, it's right up here, not on a 2.0. On a 2.0, the water pump is actually on the side of the engine. It's located underneath of it, under the intake manifold, before the bell housing. It's located right there. Put you guys down in the hole. That thing, that's the water pump belt. That's the water pump right there, to the left of it. So how do you get that out? So first we're gonna have to take half of his pancake valve off, and then we're gonna wanna take out this upper charge pipe right here. Very first thing you want to do before you ever do anything else while you're working on your coolant system. Step one, remove the radiator cap. Step two, but you're going to have to come down here and you need to, oh, well, maybe. You need to open the coolant peacock and drain the radiator and the coolant system. You're going to do this mostly so you can control the mess that you're getting ready to make. 
should just pop out and start draining, really. There it goes. And there you go. Boom. Now, typically in this scenario, if you had a green bucket or a nice clean jug, uh, five gallon pail or something, you could save this antifreeze. However, this antifreeze has 150,000 miles on it and we're taking off a lot of key components. And now's a great opportunity to just go ahead and do a simple flush of the system. And now's a great opportunity to know that we have a quality freeze point. Um, you can test your freeze point with a handful of different like testers they make. Um, some, in some areas of the country, you're gonna wanna actually mix your antifreeze a little bit heavier than 50-50, just so you can have even a lower freeze point. Unlike here in Missouri, we don't really, you can pretty much put water in your stuff all the time. We don't ever get that cold anymore. Um, it's gonna take a little bit for this thing to drain out. So and while we're waiting for it to drain, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a couple lines up here disconnected. First thing you wanna do is take your overflow tank off. And there's two 10 millimeters. One's here and one's here. And then you're gonna have a line right down there that's gonna go to the bottom of the reservoir. And then one here and one here. These are just gonna pop straight up. They're just gonna pop right up and then they should just walk right out of there. Push the clip back down just to make sure it don't go nowhere. Like that one just flew off, so I gotta have to find it. Just walk right off of there and just slide it off to the side as well. All right, now that you got all your coolant drained out and you've got your reservoir out of the, pulled up and your both your connectors on the front and back are removed, you're gonna wanna remove this harness connector right here, which is basically, so you're gonna wanna remove this harness plug right here, which is goes to the instrument cluster, it tells you when you're low on coolant. And you're gonna wanna take a screwdriver or something and then there's a little notch at the top here just pull that up and this will pop pull right off of there. there you go and then you just gotta take your reservoir and set it off to the side now typically you would have a factory charge line here and you could disconnect it somewhere over here and you'd be good in Corey's case we have a cts charge pipe so i've got to do a little bit more to get this pipe out of the way all right, clerical error on my behalf. I kind of forgot something pretty important to recommend that you take the throttle body off so that you can get to the last two hidden bolts on your water pump module. Um, I forgot about that. And as I'm like halfway through this video of shooting it, I'm gonna remind you guys to take it off. So wherever I have inserted this clip, which will probably be after the charge pipe is off or your charge pipe is off on your B8, stop right there take your throttle body off after you have your harness removed. All right, so those four T30s I was mentioning before, they are located in the four corners of the throttle body around the throttle body inlet. Pretty long. Start with the front two, and then really easy to get to the back two. All right, so now that you have your coolant reservoir out, the next thing you're gonna wanna move on to is the rest of this harness here. Um, there's a couple plugs right here. You're gonna wanna get these removed and remember, push in, pull. Push in and pull. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of these harnesses also unplugged. Remember, push in and pull. There should be one more down here. Just off to the side, there it is. And push in and there we go, okay. I'm going to have one on the back side of the alternator. Go ahead and disconnect it. And we're doing that just to get the harness out of our way. I like to push it down into this corner down here. Just so we have more access to everything. Also, we got to remove this bracket. We also got to remove this bracket right here. Which, which has two T27s in it. One there and one right there. So you got two coolant lines down here. There's one here and one here. They connect right here and right here. They're gonna have clips on them just like the ones that we removed from the coolant reservoir. So they're just gonna have a little slide lock that you're gonna wanna pull up and then you should be able to grab the housing, wiggle it and it'll slide right up and off. Now, now be warned, you might spill a little bit of coolant. There very well could be some residual antifreeze still in the lines and there again, there might not be. It is possible. So just keep that in the back of your head when you're getting ready to pull these lower lines off. Let's get 
this line right here and let's get that line right there and then that line right there disconnected. Now, after you get those lines off, you're just gonna wanna try to tuck them up out of the way to the best of your ability, and that should give you good access to get to all of your water pump module bolts now. Okay, so before you rush in and say, oh, I'm right here, let's get the water pump off. There's two more bolts that you have to take out, and there's a plug that you need to, be, that you need to know that's on there so you don't just jerk it and yank by accident. So the two screws that I'm talking about, are a little difficult to spot, but one of them is right there, and the other one actually goes on the bottom of this, is on the bottom of this line right here. You're gonna wanna remove that clamp so you can get to the T30 that bolts right in there. Those two bolts that you're getting ready to unbolt are for the crossover tube that runs to the back of the engine up into the heater core so you get heat in your car. You wanna make sure you're careful with these and pay extra care to not accidentally drop them down into the abyss because then you're gonna go hunting for them because you're gonna need them again. Let's get those two out and we'll move on to the next step. So I'm gonna use a T30. Go ahead and loosen that one up right there. And then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna loosen that one up as well. It's kinda hard for you guys to see. I do apologize, I'm trying my best here. Try to move that hose out of the way so you can get a better idea where my hand is. That's one. And we also wanna take this clamp off right here. If you take your pliers and you just slide them to a larger notch, Take them, wrap them around the tube, and just give it a little squeeze, not a lot of pressure, and that's gonna like release it from any tension that was on that. All right, so now we need to remove the other T30 that's in the back here. Make sure not to drop it. You should be able to get your hand around the back side of the motor. All right, now give that little, give that crossover tube a little wiggle, and it should walk its way right up out of there for you. There you go. Just like that. And just slide it off to the side. All right, now that you got the crossover tube out of the way, you should have access to all the remaining water pump housing bolts. Um, you need to remove this T30 here. There's a T30 here. There's a T30 here. There's a T30 there. And I believe there's a blind T30. Sorry. And then there's another T30 right here that it's very difficult to see. So once again, you're gonna have one here, one here, one here, and then you're gonna have two here. These two are gonna be a little difficult for you to see. So now you can see those two hidden bolts and that last connector. Pop that last connector off right there. If you look down in there, you see those two bolts that are kind of blind that you can't get to. So the next thing we gotta do here is now we gotta remove the drive belt cover. The drive belt cover basically is this bolt right here and this one right here. And those are also T30s. You're gonna wanna remove both of those and then the belt will just slide right off. Just go down here and pull our drive cover off. So the next thing you're going to want to do is just start undoing all your bolts for your housing. Alright, now you should just be able to walk your water pump belt off. Ugh, there we go, without any problems. And then remove your water pump. Now it might be a little stuck in there, only because it's the other one end is attached to the oil cooler, but with a little finesse, it should. There we go, just like that. 
Okay, out comes your water pump. And there you go. One factory plastic Audi water pump. Perfect. All right, so we got both our water pumps. So now you got your water pump out, right? Nice, there it is. So now you have a decision to make. Do you replace just the water pump itself, which you can do. It, you know, that's very easy to do. They actually make a uh, part for that. It's right here. You can just replace that. Unbolt it, boom, 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 boom. You take those five bolts out right there and you replace the water pump. Or you can go with an upgrade. Um, this is a graph water pumps. There's the part number right there. I don't think there's any mother marks. Oh, there it is. There you go. Part number P4 PA1359. And that is an all aluminum water pump housing, like the whole thing. You're getting an aluminum water pump, an aluminum water pump housing, a aluminum thermostat housing inlet, and you're getting new O-rings, and you also got a new sensor. Um, I went ahead and took the old sensor out just because I've had some bad luck in the past with aftermarket sensors not registering properly and these cars are temperamental in some cases about aftermarket sensors. So I went ahead and I'm using the OEM sensor. Um, there was, unless you have a problem with the OEM sensor, I would always recommend if you're going to do like a plastic to an aluminum upgrade or something like this, um, try to go with OEM sensors on your vehicles. A lot of times you're gonna have fewer headaches and fewer gremlins um, with codes especially by not using aftermarket sensors. Sometimes it's okay, but majority of the time the rule of thumb is don't trust it. Just cheap sensors in general usually don't render back good quality and they don't last very long. Usually higher quality sensors, higher quality manufacturing, you know, quality control is a thing. It really is. So just keep that in mind when you're, you know, buying these parts. Um, all right, well, time to get this one installed then. The process to get this one back in there is exact opposite, except for putting the timing belt on, not timing belt, except for putting the water pump drive belt on. That's kind of a little bit of a, kind of a pain in the butt, but it's pretty easy to do. So. Let's get this water pump installed and then I'll show you guys how to get that belt on. So now we gotta get the water pump drive belt on. Um, you're gonna need a 24 millimeter wrench, sorry, a 24 millimeter socket and a, rent, a ratchet to match. And you're gonna to wanna to put that down on the crank pulley. And you put it on the crank like that. And they're gonna to wanna to pull this down towards them. As they pull it, you'll be able to walk, you'll be able to walk this belt back up and onto here. So once you get it up on here, then you can just slide it the rest of the way on and you're golden. So I'm gonna go get some help real quick. And I'll be right back and I'll show you how to do this. Huh. There you go. You can see it goes on pretty easy. You just line your belt up with the grooves in it. And then as you rotate the crank around, you're going to have it up over these notches already. And as you rotate around, it's just going to walk itself right up on there as you see. So. Awesome sauce. Let's get that cover installed and then we're going to get the crossover to put back on. Yeah, showing you that part of this in a montage was 10 times easier. Um, wiring harness installed. Um, everything's back to where it was. Now all we got to do is put that charge pipe back in the car and put the coolant reservoir back in. So I'm just going, we're going to do one of, there we go, done. So we got that charge pipe back in. 
And the only thing left to install as far as OEM is putting, whoa, not making a mess with the coolant reservoir. But you gotta reinstall that line, reinstall that clip, and set it back there, and then put these two lines on. So let's get it done. Bam! And it's done. And that is how you do your 2OT Audi B8 water pump. Only thing you need to do now is top it off with coolant, which we're gonna do right this second. All right, well, and there you go. That is how you change the water pump on your V8 Audi A4. So I hope this video brought you guys a ton of value and you were able to successfully install your Volts, uh, your 20T Audi A4 water pump. And if it does, and if it has, please smash that like button for me. Let me know. It really helps me out. It lets me know that this video at least brought you a ton of value, whether you're subscribed or not. If you want to learn more on how to maintain your V8 Audi A4 and save a ton of money doing it, learning a couple things on, along the way, smash the subscribe button and get notified of all the content we put out on this channel, especially the DIYs and some of the insane Audi builds that we do. We got a Pro-Am drift car that I am in the currently building and you guys are going to see it rip through the 2021 season. So make sure to smash the subscribe button, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. I'm Audi. Oh, there's another one in the bucket. Hey, guys, check it out. There's two videos here you might find interesting. One of them is other V8 stuff, and another, these other ones over here is whatever the YouTube algorithm says you will like. So thanks for watching.